In this lesson, we're going to start looking at linear equations. And we're going to start solving four variables. And an algebraic expression that shows two expressions are equal is what an equation is. And equal is the keyword. As soon as you see that equal sign, we're talking about an equation now, not an expression. To solve an equation, we have a set of steps here. We're going to remove groupings, so the brackets. We're going to put like terms together, so add, subtract as much as we can. Perform like operations on both sides. So that's really the key step, but really it's probably not a step you even think about. And then we can check to make sure our answer was right. The perform like operations on both sides, that means you can add, subtract, multiply, divide, anything you want on either side of the equation, provided you do the same thing to both sides. Now the reason I say you don't even think about that is because most people just move pieces. They think they're just taking a negative on one side and making it positive on the other. But really you're not. You're actually adding to both or subtracting from both. So let's look at example A here. And I'll do it this way, the performing like operations. And after that I'll solve the rest of the equations using transposition, which is just moving the pieces, which is what you're used to. So the first example here, x minus 2 equals 7. Even if you don't know algebra or know how to do this, I'm sure you're saying the answer is 9. 9 is the only number that if you subtract 2, the answer is 7. Well, to show that that's the solution, what we need to do is get rid of this 2. So we're going to add 2. We're going to add 2 because plus 2 and minus 2, when you put them together, gives you 0. But we have to do the same thing on both sides. So that means also adding 2 over here. That means the answer is x equals 7 plus 2 or 9. Now, I'm sure you're thinking why do we do that? Well, that's the mathematical reason that you're allowed to pretend to move the negative 2 and make it positive. So that's usually how people think about it and how people talk about it, but this is the reason why. So from there on in, we'll just move the pieces and solve the questions, but now you know the real reason why. One thing that I didn't mention up here that is important is a solution to an equation is anything that makes the statement true when you put it into the variable. Okay, literal coefficients, that's the variable. All right, so when we ask for a solution, that means find the values that when you put them into the variable, it makes the statement true. So in this case, 9 is the solution because if you put 9 in for x, to check the answer, we take the 9, we take 9 minus 2, and we're checking, does that equal 7? And in this case, yes, it does equal 7. For b, we have t divided by 2 equals 5. We want to know t, so in order to get rid of this 2, here it's division, so on the other side it's going to be multiplication. So t is going to equal 5 multiplied by 2, which is 10. And let's do this one as well then. 5 minus 2y equals 3. Well, we want the y, so let's keep the minus 2y here. If 5 goes to the other side, we do minus 5. Here it's plus, here it's minus. Really, we're subtracting from both sides, but we'll just say move it. So minus 2y equals negative 2. We can divide both sides by minus 2. You get rid of that. And you get the final answer, which will stick here. y equals negative 2 divided by negative 2, which is 1. So to solve f, we're going to say, OK, we need to follow the order of operations. So let's do the brackets first. And to get rid of the brackets, we're going to multiply in the 3. So we get 7 minus 3 plus 6, p, minus with minus, equals 4 plus 2p. Now we want to collect the p's together and put the numbers together. So we get 6p minus 2p is going to equal 4 minus 7 plus 3. When the 7 comes over, it becomes minus. 3 comes over, it becomes plus. That gives us 4p equal to 4 minus 7 is negative 3, plus 3 is 0. Divide both sides by 4 means p 
is equal to zero. And so there's the answer for P. All right, I'll just turn off the sound and stop talking here. Quickly do the solutions for D and E, and then come back to do G, H, and I. Okay, so hopefully you understood D and E. The solutions are there anyway. Hopefully you've also tried these ones here on your own. So the only difference with G, H, and I is now we've got less numbers, more letters. But remember, the variables are just numbers. We just don't know what they are, but they work just like numbers. So if we want to solve for N here, what we're going to do is get the N on the side by itself. So we'll keep the 4M on that side and bring over the minus 1. Then we need to get rid of the 4. Well, we do that the same way. We divide by 4. So n is 4m minus 1 over 4. h, we can do the same thing. pv equals nrt. Well, we want t. There it is. We need to get rid of n and r. n and r are multiplied together with t, so the opposite of multiply. Or to get rid of it, we divide. Same thing to both sides. Those are gone, and we get the final answer as t equals pv over nr. For question i, then, there's a couple of ways to go about it. We can distribute the p into both first if you want, then isolate the q2, because that's what we want to solve for, q2, and then rearrange the pieces like we would have done in g. Or we can actually get rid of the p first. Remember, p is multiplied by the bracket, so if we divide by p, and we divide by p here, we end up with q1 over p equals q2 minus q1. Well, we want q2, so if we just stick the final answer over here, then q2 is going to be the part on the left, q1 over p here, then this Q1 comes over, minus turns into a plus, and we get the final answer. That's it for this lesson, so we'll see you next time when we start to look at converting English sentences into math equations.